Welcome back to the channel. So today I have a special guest for you, Dr. Shaham Das, who is a consultant forensic psychiatrist to talk about uh, Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp, of course, in this trial with uh, views as to their behavior, their characteristics, uh, potential diagnoses and uh, what the doctor thinks of these in relation to this case. So uh, first of all, uh, welcome Dr. Das. Um, your channel, obviously, uh, viewers can see on the screen here and I will link it in the description below. Um, just a brief introduction to yourself, uh, wh what's brought you to here and uh, your career so far? Okay, it's an absolute pleasure, Mr. Shen Smith. It's been a while since I've been on your channel. Uh, so I'll give you a very quick summary of what I do. So I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I Re I assess and also rehabilitate people who've committed quite serious offences, anything from arson, sexual assaults, violence to murder. Uh, and I give expert, I give evidence as an expert witness in criminal trials as well. And I'm also a wannabe fledgling YouTuber. And you've been in court today, so we might talk about that in another video. So um, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now and do subscribe to Dr. Das. There's some fantastic videos on that channel. So in this video, I thought we'd talk about the, the behavior traits, any potential diagnoses of each party to be fair and um and unbiased in in respect of this so but let, let's let's start with which which everybody is is talking about really which is uh, which is amber heard so um what, what are your what were your immediate thoughts when you uh, came to know about this trial research this trial because i know you've done some videos on this what were your immediate thoughts about yeah. her and her behavior so i think the thing that interested me the most was my critique of the expert witnesses in the trial because that's what i do for a living obviously i do it for criminal cases and this is different because it's a defamation so it's more of a more to do with civil law yeah. so i thought it's i'm sure we'll get into this later but it, the stark contrast between the quality of the experts was interesting to me so dr spiegel i thought was very poor at giving his evidence whereas dr curry who assessed amber heard i, th I thought was exceptionally uh, good. I suppose the other aspects would be the mental health diagnoses, in particular one the ones that Amber Heard was given. So two, there's two things there. So that the quality of the evidence of the experts, and then the diagnoses. So you you said you were not impressed by Dr. Spiegel's evidence. And so why yeah. why would you say that? Just very broadly. Sure. So one of the things was that he hadn't actually met with Johnny Depp. I know he tried and he'd been declined, but he'd made some quite big inferences about Johnny Depp's mental state. So for example, he tried at one point to make the claim that Johnny Depp's cognitive speed had slowed down mm. because of the way that Dr. Spiegel saw Johnny Depp react to some of the evidence during the trial. And he actually compared that to Johnny Depp uh, countenance in films. Yes. Now, obviously, you don't need to be an expert. Any 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 guy off the street, guy or gal, would say, "Well, hang on, that that's not equivalent, right?" So, if you've if you're in a film, then you've rehearsed lines over and over again. You're playing a character. If you're doing a if you're participating in a trial, especially one that's worth ten, it's worth tens of millions of dollars. Then you know you're going to be con you're going to be in a different mind state. You're going to be concentrating on a different level. So that was one thing that jumped out for me. Um, another issue is that Dr. Spiegel, I think, called Johnny Depp an idiot at one point. Mm. And then he tried to backtrack by saying, I'm not calling Johnny Depp an idiot. I'm calling what he did or his decisions during the trial idiotic. Yeah. Which, you know, is semantics really, isn't it? So that's really unprofessional. You know, I've never, I might have had these thoughts uh, when yeah. I'm giving evidence. But I've certainly never said them aloud to a barrister or a judge. Well, no, quite right. I mean, I, I think I think many people have had thoughts like this, but I think what people would would say, uh, professionally speaking, I think I think this probably goes for for um, psychiatrists as well as as lawyers is you would you would talk about the behavior rather than the person. And so yeah. if you were going to criticize, you'd criticize the behavior, not the person uh, to be professional. And about you'd, it. Use, you'd use you'd use formal psychiatric uh, terminology so yes. you might say you know, insensible unfeasible illogical yes. not idiotic yes and well, i suppose it, one and of the things inconsistent really i suppose Daniel, in... sorry say again sorry i interrupted you one other thing that really stood out for me was that dr spiegel i thought was just very defensive in his tone right so yes. uh, i'm sure that you've cross-examined expert witnesses in your time your job as the barrister or the, or the lawyers to try and trip them up a little bit 
and you can force them into a corner where they admit that they don't know everything because we don't know everything hmm. but dr spiegel i felt was so defensive uh, and he was even slightly sarcastic in his tone when he got asked the question that he didn't think was uh, was appropriate yes uh, and that's quite right i mean our job is to to find inconsistencies is to test the evidence and to to find things that just don't add up uh, and you're right if you if you don't know something the correct answer is i don't know or i can't explain it or you know the 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 best response i've seen to that to date in practice is i can't account for the difference and it's as simple as that you can't account for the difference and so as against dr curry who i mean as a professional i personally found her evidence very credible i thought she was she was very careful she was very precise she was unfazed um i thought some of the line of questioning against her i i thought itself was unprofessional not being quick to criticize another professional but i thought it was uh, your thoughts on dr curry much what you've just said daniel so i think that she didn't get flustered you know even when she was clearly being goaded she kept her cool and just answered the questions to the best of her ability and when she was asked questions that were uh, bordering on passive aggressive she didn't lose her cool like Dr. Spiegel. She didn't become sarcastic or defensive. She just answered in a very neutral and objective manner. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And I think so. So in summary for the experts, I think I think what you're saying is um, the, the quality of the expert evidence can can say a lot for uh, the client for whom they're giving that evidence. Um, and I think most people will agree with you in, in that assessment. So um, what then would you say moving to... Um, the uh, any diagnoses of uh, of amber heard and her beha behavioral traits your your initial thoughts and then any deeper thoughts sure so when i first started researching i heard that amber was given a diagnosis of, of two different personality disorders namely borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder so just a, a very brief summary for you, for your viewers borderline personality disorder tends to be associated with people who have a massive fear of abandonment which amber Heard clearly does mm -hmm. they tend to have very turbulent and explosive relationships again this situation is exactly that mm -hmm. people with borderline tend to be very impulsive uh, they tend to have a shallow affect which means that they never really feel their emotions fully and they quite they tend to have quite an unstable mood so they change their moods they change their degrees of satisfaction and happiness very very quickly from moment to moment um, and they also have a tendency to self-harm i'm not saying that amber did okay. this and also to use drugs and alcohol so she definitely has some of those uh, characteristics uh, what, what do you make of the this might be a tangent but it, the thought the thought came to mind when you were saying all of that that what do you make of the the, the knife gift if you're aware of that uh, do, you, do you recall the knife gift uh, I read something about it, but I don't know the details. Do you mind reminding so, me? So, yeah, so she had, this was one of the points of, of sort of real contention, really. It's certainly a point of cross-examination. So um, during the period that she says that uh, Johnny Depp was in and out of sobriety and during this uh, period of uh, um, disagreement, we'll say, without using certain words for YouTube, but um, she'd given him this, this knife, which had an inscription on it in uh, Spanish, which said, until death. And so... Um, lots of people have said, you know, in fact, the, juror, the, the uh, anonymous juror, if it really was a juror, had said, you know, why would you give someone that you claim to have been doing all of that? Why would you give them um, a, a knife in those circumstances? Yeah. So if she fits in with this diagnosis of borderline personality disorder, which I actually think she does on most counts, then their behavior can be a bit unpredictable. And it's not only their mood that's quite unstable, but it's the way that they view people. So they often denigrate or idealize, that's the psychological term. So even if it's the same person, one minute they absolutely love them, can't be apart from them, only have nice things to say about them. But then literally within minutes, it can be due to a very minor argument. They can totally switch their point of view. So that could be explained by this kind of um, inability to have a... a uh, inability to keep a constant kind of image so it could be that she just at that very moment in time decided that she wanted to show johnny johnny depp her emotion and affection and love and then even moments later might have changed her mind so i guess what i'm trying to say is by na by their nature people some people with borderline personality disorder are a bit inconsistent and unpredictable in their acts 
You mentioned as well she was diagnosed with histrionic disorder. Histrionic personality disorder, yeah. So it's altogether a far less common personality disorder. And in my work in assessing people who've committed offences, it's also very rare. So histrionic personality disorder is a bit like the adjective histrionic. People want to be the centre of attention all the time. And they tend to be quite seductive and sometimes even sexually uh, explicit to try and achieve that. Also, people with this disorder, they they do anything for the approval of others, sometimes even strangers. And conversely, they take any kind of criticism or, or disapproval to heart much more than the average person. And finally, the, one of the important features, they don't learn, they don't change. So even though, you know, uh, people, they, they might embarrass themselves at parties, for example, or through behaviour such as making false allegations, they never really accept responsibility for their actions. So already, as I'm sure you'd agree, we can see some features that do seem to reflect Amber Heard. So was there anything in this case in particular that uh, you noticed um, that you'd relate to this type of disorder in, in Amber Heard? Yeah, there is. Um, before I answer that, I should say, Daniel, that if you're a little bit sceptical as I am, there's an argument that being diagnosed with a personality disorder just for the sake of a court case in itself uh, lends itself to um, a degree of less credibility because when somebody presents to mental health services and they've got problems, characteristic traits, issues with their behaviour, they're going there and they're presumably going to be open and honest about those issues and mm -hmm. the person diagnosing them doesn't have any ulterior motive. It's only to help the patient. Whereas it mm. could be argued that in a court kind of structure, the diagnoses have to be taken with a pinch of salt because the, the, the person who's making the diagnosis has some sort of ulterior motive, whether they're working for Amber Heard's defence or Johnny Depp's. They're either trying to make her look like a victim potentially or mm. make her look kind of, you know, unhinged and, and uh, unpredictable. So I just wanted to say that. Having said all of that, I'm, I'm about to contradict myself by saying that there are definitely some elements, I think, that connect uh, with Amber Heard's behaviour with those two, uh, with those two diagnoses. So the, the one that we'd be remiss not to talk about would be the defecation in the bed, right? Indeed. So <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of that. It, it, it is an accusation and she denies it. But this would be, quote unquote, fairly typical for somebody with borderline in that they're used to ramping up to the most extreme kind of behavior to make their point or to get attention. And it's even the same for histrionic personality disorder. You know, they don't go through little incremental steps they will just do whatever it takes to to make their point. And that's interesting because, um, I mean, e even in my career, in my short family career, because I didn't do family work for very long, family being you know anything to do with divorce and children, um, I came across exactly that um, in a bed, funnily enough. Um, so I I now wonder, there was nothing diagnosed. There was, there was certainly no, at least for the, as a barrister, you're not, um, you're not always involved i don't know if it's the same for you uh and your profession generally but we, we're not um we're not always instructed for the entirety of the case sometimes just one portion of the case one hearing one element or um the trial and perhaps nothing before um and so i wasn't involved for the entirety of this case but certainly for the period that i was there were no diagnoses made at all but yeah. striking similarities to, to this this trial that we're talking about now. Was a bed soiled in your case? Indeed it was, um, in, in okay. exactly the same way. And there were various arguments as to what was the cause and uh, what was the reasons behind it. Uh, and ultimately they were obviously used as allegations and so on and so forth and much much the, much as, as it is here. Um, yeah. I, there's one other point I wanted to make, if you don't yes. mind, uh, Daniel, which is that I think... Amber Heard's reaction to the outcome of the case, so her closing statement, I'm, mm. I'm sure you probably heard. Yes. She didn't accept any kind of responsibility. Her whole ethos was that the outcome was a blow to women who are victims of domestic abuse mm -hmm. because it's just uh, another reason to for women, for female victims to not be believed. And I think she even made the argument that uh, she didn't have the freedom of speech and this is all because of Johnny Depp's influence and power. Mm -hmm. However, I think most people, I'm assuming yourself, but the average person would not agree with that. The average person would say that she's been exposed lying on a number of occasions about a number of issues. So mm -hmm. she lost the case. The reason she lost the case wasn't because of 
like this um, nebulous behind the scenes dark power is because she got found to be not credible by a jury. So the quite reason right. that I, I mention all of that is that I think it ties in quite nicely with personality disorder. So somebody with a personality disorder generally struggles to learn from their mistakes, to take responsibility for their actions and to kind of accept losses. That's really interesting because that that was the the sort of predominant thought and um, li line of discussion, I suppose, with with both of the respective um, behaviors post judgment and the reasoning for it. There, there, thereby that Johnny Depp had effectively accepted responsibility for things that he'd done wrong and done badly and. Yeah. And I think that went against him in the UK trial, frankly speaking, because yeah. in, in many in many cases, the judge, in my view, had um, had made certainly assumptions and inferences in, in some parts that because he was on substances and alcohol, okay. that he must have turned, you know, you know, aggressive and so on and, and so forth. Um, again, limiting the words for YouTube, but everyone can draw the um, the, the words they they need to. Um, whereas, um, of course, she she didn't, she hadn't. I, I and I think that the, the post trial comments in the US have been that the jury came to their decision because he did accept responsibility for that which he'd done wrong. I think all of us, if yeah. we we faced a very true mirror, we could all say, well, I didn't do that very well, or that that wasn't my you know brightest hour. Um, yeah. Whereas, as you, as you say, she Amber didn't seem to accept any real responsibility for anything at all. Yeah, and absolutely, and I think that leads on to the perhaps, and I know we're going on some tangents, but I think people will be interested to hear your views. Um, certainly, one thing I noticed was the um, and what the anonymous uh, so-called juror um, mentioned was that she could suddenly turn cold. So she would be portraying extreme emotions when answering a question to the jury one moment and then turning to Camille or whoever was asking questions the next and be cold faced to listen to the question. Did you have any views on that? Uh, I did. I'm just going to say one thing before we get there. If mm. That's OK, Daniel, which is just going back to what you were saying before about Johnny Depp showing humility, basically. So he showed some sort of insight and humility. I think that's really uh, interesting because I think that's part of the reason why the whole tide of support seems to have changed over time. Mm. So I think obviously there was, there was a big mixture, but I think broadly speaking, most people believed Amber Heard at the beginning of the trial and saw her as a victim and a victim who's trying to be silenced by uh, the patriarchy. Mm. But over time, Firstly, because she lots of she told lies that were blatantly uncovered, uh, even sometimes by members of, of her own uh, party who were giving evidence on her behalf, number one. And number two, she, as you said, she refused to accept any kind of responsibility or wrongdoing. Whereas Johnny Depp didn't come out in a particularly good light, but he mm -hmm. at least accepted that he did some things wrong. And, you know, his biggest yeah. probably issue is probably his uh, substance abuse. So I think over time, the tides turned. And even though there's a small amount of support for Amber Heard, generally speaking, the vast majority of people are on Johnny Depp's side. And I think those are the key reasons why. So I just wanted to yeah. make that point. No, that's very interesting. And we're going to... And your question... Yeah. Sorry, what, what was your other question? I... Uh, I went off of my own thoughts. Um, yeah, that was the first one. And then um, secondly was uh, whether you'd noticed anything about her turning cold when she turned back for a question um, as against, yeah. uh, so e emotional versus the jury and then turning cold when she turned back to Camille or whoever was cross-examining her for the next question. Yeah, so I've got a few thoughts about that. First of all, um, I suppose that fits with somebody who's a good actress, right? So somebody who is, you know, a good actor or actress is able to fake emotions very quickly and then change. So that's mm. that's one element, I believe. Um, another element could be this personality disorder that we've talked about. So I was talking about, well, both borderline and histrionic personality disorder could be connected to that. So borderline specifically about being extremely changeable in your perspective and your outlook, going from being, you know, relatively calm to being happy to being angry uh, to being um, depressed and distressed all within moments of time and histrionic being always wanting to be the center of attention and knowing how to kind of try and manipulate a room 
Having said all that, I think that I'm a bit surprised that she wasn't a bit more sensible. If it was uh, manipulative and cold and calculating, as I believe mm. it probably was, then I'm surprised that she wasn't a bit more clever about it, knowing that the whole world is watching her and that her every move is being studied under a microscope. I, yeah. If it was me <laughs> and I had the ability to change my emotions, I'd have done it a bit slower and a bit more subtly. Do you think that... Um played much much i mean there's there's been a lot of talk about it being a televised trial and her lawyers fought to keep the cameras out and lost do you think in in all likelihood all, all things being equal do you think that would jeopardize somebody's evidence the fact that it's been filmed i mean of, of course it's not going to be easy to have this kind of testimony filmed but do you think that by itself would have jeopardized any of the evidence or or her being an actress do you think would supersede that sure good question um i think it depends on the individual cases i think in this in this very specific case i think it hurt her so i do think it jeopardized her uh, just her general public image and persona so i think because she got caught out lying on so many different instances mm. and because her emotions were so changeable and so extreme uh, I, I think a lot of people picked up on that and it, it's kind of grown into a little bit of a circus, isn't it? So once people started criticizing her, they're almost looking for a reason to to pick out any lies she's saying yeah. or any emotion she's faking. Whereas I think you can argue that, you know, obviously Johnny Depp's testimony was also televised, but he didn't come across that way. He wasn't mm -hmm. going out of his, uh, he wasn't trying to over manipulate the situation with his emotions. He actually seemed a little bit pathetic and a little bit vulnerable. Mm. So uh, here we've got an, an example of, two ways in which the same trial was televised and visualized by so many people but the people involved came out in, in two different ways and and the way that people saw them uh, was very different i think that's fascinating yeah i think that's really interesting um any other sort of closing thoughts um about the trial in general or either either character in general um i suppose my closing thoughts daniel would be that even though i can understand why people find this it is a bit of a circus show even though i can understand why people find it fascinating and i have found bits of it fascinating i think that we cannot forget that is a very serious issue and i don't think amber heard has done favors for other victims mm. especially with her closing statement trying to kind of piggyback on this movement of, of yeah. women being victimized not being believed and i think it's just really important that we separate her and her behaviour and her mistruths from the vast majority of uh, genuine victims. I think that's a, it's a very important point to make, and I've I've been quite vocal and quite clear about making that point. That that is the reason the the, the, the single biggest reason that I've been doing videos about this is because I I've, I've been there in these kind of cases, and I think that you know voices need to be heard, and uh, you know false allegations need to be called out. So if, if people are suffering, they need to come forward, they need to talk to somebody. Um, but at the same time, if, if things are found to be false, that needs to be called out. Dr. Das, it's been a pleasure. I'm sure our viewers have uh, really enjoyed listening to you and uh, will subscribe to you. Your um, channel is on, on screen and in the description below. I'm sure they'll go ahead and subscribe to you there and there'll be much more for them to enjoy over there. So um, thank you all for your time and watching. Please make sure you like the video and subscribe. Um, subscribe to Dr. Das and we'll see you next time. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. All the best, my man.